Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Just give everyone a second to sit down. All right. Hi, everyone. Relationships matter, especially those between your app and your consumer. Today, I want to share with you three ways that you can design for maximum retention in your app. My name's Isabel, and I'm part of the developer strategy team here at Oculus. That means that every day I work with developers, and I help them improve their apps and launch successfully on our store. I also get to see the numbers from behind the scenes. So I have a lens to see what's effective and maybe what's not working so well. Of course, we have several metrics that we talk about when we talk about success. But today, I want to talk to you specifically about retention. Before I worked in VR, I worked in mobile apps. And in mobile, when you're talking about retention, you're talking about a multitude of things. You're talking about creating a push notification strategy that hooks people back into your app. Or maybe you're designing mini games and daily quests that create a habit for retention. These strategies work, and they're important. They're trying to optimize the funnel by focusing on changes that maybe create a little bit of a different behavior in your users. And when you have hundreds of millions of users, any small change like this can affect your bottom line. But then I came to VR, and I noticed that retention in VR is different. And I saw this in the apps that I was looking at, the top retention apps on our platform. Retention in VR is different, or at least it's different today. Do you remember the first mobile app that you loved and that you used all the time? I remember my dad's favorite app. When he first got a phone, he downloaded about 200 apps. He filled it. But there was one that he kept coming back to time and time again. And it was actually quite simple. You would press a button, and the phone would fill up with beer. You remember this. And then you would tilt it back, and using the magic of the accelerometer, you would chug this beer, and everyone believed you were chugging a beer from your phone. And then, at the very end, <coughs> it would burp. And my dad loved this app. He used it all the time. He would show it to people all the time. And <laughs> no worries. And for months, I couldn't invite anyone over to my house because my dad would bring out this app. And in the end, that's a simple concept. But that's retention, right? When someone loves your app, and they come back to it time and time again. Apps have evolved a great deal since then. And we expect a lot more from apps today than we did back then. But when I look at the top, some of the most retentive apps on our platform, I'm kind of reminded of that beer app. These are some of the more attentive apps on our platform. And what's really great to see is the variety of things. We have some AAA games in there, but we also have indies. We have utilities and creativity tools. You see some brands that you recognize, but also some completely original ideas that only exist in VR. Many types of these apps enjoy a high retention, sometimes really, really high. Some of our top apps see more than 75% of people coming back in that first month. That's really cool. And it's not just a handful of apps. More importantly, we also see a correlation between most retentive apps when we cross-reference it with our top revenue apps. So I think retention is really important that we should be talking a lot about it. But when I started digging into these apps and thinking about why do I think that they're really retentive, what makes me keep coming back to these apps, I saw some similarities in the way that they do this. And I think that what they do is that they create a relationship with people. I kind of think of it as similar to making a friend in real life. First, you might say hi, and it's kind of polite. Maybe it's a little patient. You're trying to impress them. And then you strike up a conversation and maybe you really get going, right? You make some jokes or you get a little philosophical. Your true personality starts coming out. You become familiar. And then, at some point, you have to say goodbye. But when you do that, 
you make sure that you figure out how do you stay in touch? When are you going to hang out the next time? So I think apps, and really good apps, do something that's a little bit like that. First, they make a great first impression. Then they start to share their personality and become familiar. And lastly, they figure out a way to stay in touch, both inside of the app and outside. But this is not new. You might already know some of this, and you think that, of course, it's a great way to build a great product and design a great product. So today, I want to dig a little bit deeper and use some of my favorite apps to talk to you about ways that you can do this that are specific to VR, starting with making a great first impression. Now, when I say making a great first impression, I want to be clear that I'm not just talking about onboarding or showing someone how your controller buttons work. I'm really talking about something a little bit deeper, making a connection with people. And I, wish, I want to show you an example from one of my favorite apps, which is First Contact. First Contact comes from the Oculus Rex team, who also built Toybox and Oculus Dream Deck. And they had a pretty big task, because this came out when we first launched our touch controllers. So they had to help people understand how the controllers worked and make it intuitive for a multitude of tasks, whether it was pointing or shooting or pushing or pulling. And that's a pretty big task. But this isn't a tutorial. In fact, I still demo this app all of the time to people. I really, really love it. And when I spoke to Bernie, who was on the product team for this, you know, he didn't talk to me about how he included information or anything like that. What he said to me was that, you know, VR can really be overwhelming sometimes, or you can easily feel alone. What they wanted to do was acknowledge your actions, and they felt that that was really powerful. So let's see what they built. Now, I love this robot, and I know dozens of people who also respond really, really positively to him. He's kind of shy, he's a little bit clumsy, like why is he kind of knocking into all of the things? And then he hides behind the wall. When I think about why this app is a meaningful one, and not just an intro or an onboarding, I think back to this moment when this robot waves. And again, I demo this to a ton of people. What I'm really struck by is how emotionally people respond to this robot and to that moment of the wave. You know, sometimes people, they'll do like a simple, easy wave like Aaron does, or like Valeria in the middle, they beckon him out from behind the wall. Or like Dorian, and I see this all the time, people actually like mimic the way that he peeks out from the wall. But, you know, why do you do that? I don't know, but it's completely human and it's completely natural. I think this physical human reaction to this robot is really important. This is kind of the magic that first contact brings to us. In VR, people's body language and their natural movements get to be part of the UI that we're designing for. And that's extremely powerful. That's really cool. So that's my first takeaway for everyone here building an app, is you have to identify what is the magic inside of your app why should someone use it? Why will they love it? And then I want you to get to it as quickly as possible. This is one of the biggest cardinal sins that I see in VR, all of the apps I look at. If you haven't created something that, that makes me feel something unique within the first three to five minutes, you should. If I don't feel that in the first three to five minutes, I would say that it's kind of hard to impress me after that. So make sure that you're building for them. And on the other hand, don't build so much magic that it's really hard for me to find my way. Like we saw Bernie saying, VR can be overwhelming, and it's kind of a new medium. So make sure that you're showing people the way. Let me show you a couple of clips from First Contact. Now, First Contact, in my opinion, establishes one of the gold standards for what we call wayfinding. 
that system of information and design elements that you include in your app to help people guide themselves. By design, the app waits a few seconds before it pops up with the instructions to wave back. And that's really important, because then I feel like I'm in charge. I'm not doing something wrong or being overwhelmed with information. Here's another quick example I want to show you. So you see the hex animation pop up. But what I think is really great about this example is that you actually have two wayfinding systems that are working together. So you have the hex system popping up and telling you how you should be behaving. But also you have the robot pointing to where you should be inserting the floppy disk. So he kind of becomes your trusty guide in this experience and leads you along the way. If VR can be overwhelming, you have to help people along. But don't push them. You want to do it in a very patient way. You want to really nudge them. But do it patiently and with intent. Don't allow it to be an overwhelming experience. So these are two important elements of making a great first impression, I think, that are especially important in VR. Once you establish those first steps, you get to start sharing your personality. And who could tell us how to do that better than Rick and Morty? Holy crap, Rick! You, 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 you made a Morty clone, Rick! Yeah, I know. I had to rearrange the entire garage to do it, Morty. Morty clone, pay attention to me. I need you to take this laundry and put it in the washing machine. And if that's too confusing of instructions for you, you know, there's a dry erase board on the, that I put up in the garage here. In the dry erase board area, you'll see I wrote instructions on what you're supposed to do. So from the first moment that you step into this garage, Rick and Morty make themselves known. It is so fun. I mean, their first task that they tell you is to clean this hideously dirty laundry. They have a wayfinding system of the whiteboard where you can always know where to look. But it's set up in a way that they write just the most inane, obvious things, kind of insulting your intelligence a little bit. Um, that's really, it's really amazing what this team has built. It, there's a depth there of how much they have established a tone and keep it consistent throughout the experience. You really do find this humor in every nook and cranny of this app. And it's really amazing. It's really fun. So I encourage you all to take a look at this app, maybe again, and test it out. See how far this personality goes into the game design. There are some ways that they do this that are incredibly unique and important to VR. Here's a quick example. I made this tasty chunk right here just for you. <laughs> when you're thinking about the personality or the tone of your app, I encourage you to be creative. I still see so many apps that are submitted that have 2D interface design, or they maybe use a, a living room as a menu that looks suspiciously similar to a certain home environment that exists in VR. You really have to push yourself to reinvent the menus and the interactions. We get to live in a world of VR where there's not a ton of established conventions. You don't necessarily need a red X on the right hand to tell you to exit an, uh, an app or a game. If you rethink some of these tropes and you create something unique, as long as you're consistent and you explain it really well, People will recognize that, and they will appreciate this. The world that you've built for them, they'll keep coming back to it time and time again. And of course, menus and interactions are not the only place to insert this. Remember that since VR is still an exploratory medium, there will be moments where people will get a little bit lost. There will be moments of friction. There will be a little bit of loading time. One of my favorite ways to analyze an app is to get really lost. See how far this goes. Let's take a look. Jeez, Rick, I mean, he's, uh, I don't think he's getting it, really. Yeah, you know, all he has to do is put the, uh, the clothes in the washing machine and then turn it on. You know, it uh, doesn't take rocket science to figure that out. It's even up on the dry erase board I made. <laughs> and I don't mean just for a minute. I want you to just sit there for five minutes. Just wait. Do nothing. Be lost. Jeez, I mean, 
Boy, this this this, this Morty clone he really doesn't know what the hell it's doing. You know, it's just kind of just bumbling, bumbling about like, like. Yeah, I know, I know. I see, I, I, I see the same thing you you see, Morty. Yeah, I mean, it's just bumbling about. You know. <laughs> I love that moment when Rick pinches his nose. He like cannot take it that you're being so stupid. <laughs> Alchemy has really taken all of these friction and pain points and reappropriated them to make them part of the personality that they're trying to convey. This is one of your superpowers. You have to remember when you're in VR, you can actually tell what people are doing. You, you don't have to guess whether they're looking at your screen. You actually know. So you can take that opportunity and take those pain points and turn them into funny moments or useful moments or inspiring moments. Some friction is inevitable, so just build and have fun in case that happens. Those are my top two favorite things of how to show a personality that are a little bit unexpected in VR. Now that you've designed it to make that amazing first impression and to show your personality, you have to think about how that experience and all of that work doesn't end the moment that you exit an app or a game. You get to create a way to stay in touch with people. One of my favorite examples of this is the app Big Screen. This is a very in-depth experience of desktop sharing. It includes creating social spaces and changing the environment. They recently had a really big uh, update that includes cinema quality screen, streaming. And that was partly built from a use case that they were seeing already in the app. So they leaned into it. And they saw a really, really great lift in retention from that update. When I spoke to him, Darshan said that, you know, it's really about the communication. And what I liked about what he was saying is not just about marketing and telling people that you've updated your app, but really it's also a moment to validate your assumptions and test out any misconceptions or biases that you might have had. That's what I would say is kind of amazing in VR, is that we have the unique advantage of having a really tight community of people, all of the people that are in this room and all of the people that are in this conference, who care about making your products better. The better that your apps are, the more amazing that VR is to use. So make sure that you find people and you connect with them, whether it's on social networks or maybe across forums and different platforms. You have to really work to create a feeling of community. And that's really, really important to your app. It's a way to both get bug fixes and feature requests, but also, as Darshan said, validate your biases. Make sure that you're building the right thing. And on the other hand, you can't forget about other channels that exist that are not the forums and the social networks. I want to talk to you about a couple of them that I see a lot of people maybe aren't thinking about, including your assets on the store. I've seen some really great examples of people when they make a very big change to their app, actually update their icons, update their screenshots. Think about this as one way to communicate with people. If someone has downloaded your app but hasn't come back in a while, this is one way to tell them, hey, there's something new. You should check us out again. And as you heard Christina talk about earlier today, we also have Explore, which is a way for you to be able to build developer stories that will be surfaced to the right people at the right time. It's coming to Rift in this next year. And then you have to think about the actual in-app experience. One of the things I really like when I use Big Screen is that they do a really phenomenal job of helping guide the way, especially when it comes to new things, like their new avatar system, where you can test around different hairstyles, although I always like the short purple one. That's, that's me. And then you can also play around, and you can see the new content that they've created in the environments which I really like that they editorialize, so that you have some that are perfect for gaming, or that you have others that work better for cinematic displays. So think about what it's like after someone exits your app, and then welcome them back. Are there different things that you should be pointing out? Can you help guide the experience in a way that feels really meaningful to them, like you recognize them? When you see a friend for the second time, you don't introduce yourself again. 
So don't necessarily do that with your app. So that's it. These are the three ways that you can design to really have great retention. And hopefully I've shown to you some examples of ways that apps do this that are really meaningful in VR. But before you leave here, I want to give you the homework to do this with your own app. To make sure that you're making a great first impression, ask yourself, have you really identified what's the magic in your app? And do you get to that within the first three to five minutes? Do you guide people through their experience in a way that feels meaningful? And then as you start to share your, your personality and get familiar with people, do you create a tone and stay consistent? Do you build it and design it into every part of the app, including your interactions and your menus? Have you really thought about that in a creative way, or are you relying on tropes that already exist when you don't have to? Have you identified the pain points, the moments of friction, anything that might not be working exactly in the right way? And then do you take advantage of them and make them a moment where you can actually show your personality again? And then lastly, when you're figuring out how to stay in touch, have you found and fostered your community no matter where they might be? Have you utilized our platform tools? We have a few of them. We're trying to make sure that you can communicate with people outside of your app, so get to know them. And lastly, do you welcome people back? Have you thought about past the first experience, what's the second and the ongoing experiences that will make people feel welcome? That's what I had for you today. Thank you so much. And of course, stay in touch.